Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on Slantlands, we're out here in Death Valley. I brought with me a little film camera I found in a box in my office that I haven't shot on in years. So I thought, this will be fun. Take it out to Death Valley, shoot some panoramic shots. It's a panoramic film camera. I couldn't afford the Hasselblad X-Pan or the Fuji, which made great panoramic uh, shots. In that day, they were expensive cameras. They're three or $4,000 then. You can't get them for under $3,000 now. So I bought this little uh, Horizon 202. The Hasselblad and Fuji have a lens that is really optically made to give you a 180 degree view. This one has a 28 millimeter lens, it's a 2.8, but the lens swings on an axis inside the camera. And it's going to expose just over two frames of 35 millimeter film. So you're not dealing with the edges that start to have softness or issues. You're dealing with the middle, the sharpest part of the lens for the entire exposure. So reality is it should be sharper, cleaner, and not have that edge problems you get with a flat plane panoramic camera where optics start to fall apart a little bit in the edges. You can get chromatic aberration, get vignetting, softness on the edges of lenses. This is using the middle of the lens to make the entire exposure should be sharper. Let's talk about the origin of this camera. This camera is, is a Russian made camera. It's a company called KMZ and a Russian name that I won't even try to say because I'll insult everyone who speaks Russian. But KMZ, they made a very boxy metal camera in the early uh, days of the company. Only had one set of gears which gave you four speeds. In 1989, they kind of reworked it. it. Went from that metal box to this ABS plastic housing. And they also put a second gear in the camera so you now had eight shutter speeds. So you have those slow speeds and faster speeds as well. So it was a no-brainer. People were shooting panoramics. The expensive cameras were out there. This was an inexpensive, I don't want to say hobbyist, but kind of a hobbyist uh, way to get into the market and be able to shoot panoramic images. This is one of the disadvantages of this camera. And that is it is set, the focus is set on infinity. So if you get something really close to you and you're shooting at 2.8, there's no way it's going to be in focus because it's set out on infinity. You cannot focus this camera. You can't change the focus. You just have to live with the focus that it gives you. It also has varied shutter speeds. And the way this works is it's got a slit that opens and that slit just travels around that little cylinder inside. You can go from 250, 125, or 60. Those are your three options on the white button on the top. Now if I switch it to the yellow button on the top, I now have a two second, four second, eight second. Those are your only, sh only shutter options. Two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, or 60, 125, or 250. If I want to try to do a portrait of someone, I shot an individual at a cemetery we were at uh, just for fun, and I'm going to want to shoot that in as much light as possible and as close to 16 as possible if I want to get that person very close to the camera. Because you've got to build enough depth of field to be able to get things close, in, close to you in focus. I shot a sign out of an old ghost town uh, and I got that very close. And it's going to be in focus roughly. You know, I was very close to it, but it's going to start to fall off a little bit in the front. The focus is going to move away from the camera as you go from f16 and start to open wider and wider on the lens. So it's always going to be focused on infinity, but at f16 it's going to come up to almost three feet from the camera. But if you go to like f11, it's going to probably go to like five feet, and then eight is going to go, it's just going to keep going. The focus is going to go further and further away from you as you open the aperture wider and wider. So that's the disadvantage of the camera. But the advantage is it's inexpensive and it gives you a great panoramic view and it shoots film. So I've been shooting this camera for a while. Here's some images I did at Arches. Just really great vistas. Here's some other images I shot at a cemetery we went out to one day. A couple of cemeteries actually, we shot some images with it. I really enjoy shooting on this camera. It is an easy camera to use, except for loading the films, maybe a little bit difficult. But you do have to take a meter. You're gonna to have to take a meter reading because there's no meter, there's no focus. So it really is a little bit about calculating what the camera will do. You've got to keep that in mind as you use it because you've got to understand focus distance. At f16, it gives you about three feet, and each aperture that gets smaller than that is gonna give you less and less. So you've got to have those things in mind when you shoot it and when you work with it. But if you want a camera that gives you a different perspective, 
It's just fun to use. I mean, it really, for the compromises you have to make to use this camera is well worth it. I think it's a fun camera to use to be able to shoot film and shoot on a panoramic view. And so I would check it out. So there you have it. There's my wrap up, my thoughts about this camera. If there are other old film cameras that you think would be interesting for us to use and shoot and talk about, leave it in the comments below. I'm looking for something interesting to shoot with. Something fun, different. That's perfect. Let's do that. Something fun and different. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking.